Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I advocate a lot for asynchronous messaging. It can add reliability, temporal decoupling, and much more. But what are some of the challenges? One of them is back pressure. The idea that on average, you're gonna produce more messages than you can consume. Ultimately, this leads to just filling up your queue and you can never really catch up. I'm gonna explain a little bit more what the problem is and various ways of handling it. I'd like to thank Solace for sponsoring this video. Solace provides a complete event streaming and management platform that makes it easier to design, deploy, and manage event-driven architecture across hybrid, multi-cloud, and IoT environments. For more on Solace, check out the link in the description. So in a perfect world, on average, and that's the key, is that we can consume more messages than we're producing. So we have a producer, it sends a message or publishes a message to either our QR topic, depending on your scenario. And we have this consumer that is just basically waiting. It's not doing anything yet. And it's gonna basically consume our message. So it consumes it, that's great. And then it's basically waiting. It's free to process another message. So at that point, our producer sends another message and then our consumer is free. So it can pick up that message and consume it. Now, again, this is about on average, because you kind of will have peaks and valleys where you're producing more than you can consume at any given time, but ultimately you end up catching up because you can consume, again, on average, more than what you're producing. So where things start going wrong is when we're producing more messages than we can consume, meaning we have a greater inflow. So our producer sends a message, our consumer's not doing anything yet, so we can ultimately consume that message but our producers producing more messages. It's producing one, in my example here, two, three, and we're still working on that first message. But the thing is, like I said, with peaks and valleys, is that we could catch up if we don't continue producing messages. But on average, if we keep producing these messages at a rate that's faster than we can consume them, we're gonna kind of just ultimately fill up our queue and we're never gonna be able to process everything and catch up. So one solution to this is to apply the competing consumers pattern by basically adding more instances of that consumer so that we can process more messages concurrently. Now this can apply to a queue as well as a topic and for a topic in PubSub, this depends on if your platform supports kind of consumer groups where you have multiple consumers in a group to apply this. But the basic gist is we're in my case, if I add another instance of this consumer, it basically doubles our capacity to consume messages. So we, in essence, doubled our rate that we can consume. So when we're producing a message, our first consumer is available, it will pick up that message, say we're just using round robin here. But if another message at the same time is produced, well, we have another consumer available to process that message. So we can just pick up that message in another consumer. So basically, I've just doubled our capacity to consume messages. The competing consumers pattern has a couple of issues that you might need to address. The first is ordering, specifically to the order of processing messages. When I had one consumer, I was just processing them first in, first out. So if there was some correlation between messages, you were just doing them in order. Now you're doing them concurrently. So if this is an issue, check out my video on ordering and processing messages in a particular order. I'll have a link in the description. The second issue with competing consumers is kind of adding now more load downstream. Because you're adding more processing power to process more messages concurrently, in the example here, if we have our consumers interacting with the database, so we have our message, it's being produced, it's going to our broker, we have a consumer picking up that message, and then we kind of have this steady flow of messages coming in. So we have our second consumer pick up that message. If we just had one and we weren't applying the competing consumers, our load on our database is at a certain value that we know everything's okay. But the moment we add another consumer, we basically doubled our capacity. Now we have more interactions and more load hitting our database. So this could be a database, there could be anything else that's downstream that now potentially can have an impact on it in terms of performance because you're adding that much more load to it. So your queue is kind of like a buffer. And my analogy here is to think of your queue like a pond. So you have an inflow, which is a river, and you have an outflow, which is a river. When you have a lot of water coming into your pond, to your queue, messages going into your queue, if my example with competing consumers is a way to handle that because the water is rising, we widen the outbound uh, river so that we can get more water out to lower it. So that was one side of the equation is to kind of widen that outbound flow. 
is the competing consumers. Add more processing power so we can consume more messages. But there's the other side of this that we can look at. We can also look at that inbound, that flow going in to kind of limit the amount of water or messages we can go into our queue or to our pond. So this means that we have a limit, a set number of messages that we can have our, in our queue at any given time. So while we're producing messages to our broker, we have two different consumers and that first message can go to the first consumer because it's not consuming anything yet. Same thing with that second message because we're producing at a pretty good rate here. But now we have two consumers, they're unavailable, they're processing a message, but we have a good flow of messages going in here. So because we defined our limit of two, that first one's fine, the second one's fine, but that moment we try to enqueue another message, this is gonna fail. Now because of the synchronous, it might be coming from client calling code like UI, we don't necessarily just wanna immediately throw an error. Now again, kind of this idea of dealing with this on the inflow when we're producing is kind of more of a safeguard. So we may have some immediate retry or an exponential back off and while this may be blocking kind of that calling code, the client, it's better than just potentially throwing. So maybe what we have is we have some immediate retry. And when we've done that, we've had this other message that was completely processed. Our consumer picks up the next message. So now we only have one message in our queue. So when we do our maybe immediate retry or a back off, now we're able to place that message in our queue. So a big portion of this is really understanding when you're producing more than you can consume. So the idea of how long is a message sitting in a queue? How many messages are sitting in a queue? What's the lead time from when you produced it and sent it to the queue to when you picked it up to start processing it? As well as the processing time of when you did pick up a message out of the queue, how long did it actually take to process? So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be coming up with a video of that shortly. So there's different ways of dealing with back pressure, but we gotta look at both sides of the equation, kind of that inflow of messages that we're producing and the outflow of messages that we're consuming. On the consuming side, as I mentioned with something like competing consumers, you can just add more instances to process more messages concurrently. But you gotta be aware of kind of all the downstream services that may be affected because of increased load, as well as just looking at the processing time of any how you consume a message. If consuming a particular message takes 200 milliseconds and you can optimize that to 100 milliseconds, well, you just increased your throughput right there. Now on the inbound side of actually producing messages, you may wanna set a limit on how many messages you can actually have in a queue. So again, if you're thinking about this like a pond, your pond's only so deep, it can only hold so much water. But to me, this is kind of more of a safeguard. It's really to understand that if you have some extraordinary peak load where you're producing more messages that you can consume, you can have the client deal with that in a way so that you know you're gonna get an exception when you're trying to produce that message. And as I mentioned, maybe you have some immediate retries or exp exponential back offs because it may just be a really high peak where there will be a value and you can catch up. But again, check out my video that I will have soon about metrics so you know when you're in this situation where you're producing more than you can consume. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.